Welcome to Now on Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. We'll cover the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 2 release, the Android Studio Narwhal release, the Android Show, Androidify, the Wear OS Spotlight Week, and so much more. Android 16 QPR2 Beta 2 is here. This introduces a minor SDK version and new features. You'll find new widget APIs allow you to measure widget engagement, like impressions, tap actions, scroll events, size, and position. Health Connect automatically tracks steps using device sensors. Also, the exercise segment and exercise session data types have been updated. You can now record and read weight, set index, and rate of perceived exertion for exercise segments. To elevate Android security starting in September 2026, Android will require all apps to be registered by verified developers in order to be installed on certified Android devices. Android developer verification aims to deter bad actors and make it harder for them to spread harm. If you distribute apps through Google Play, you likely already fulfill these requirements. For developers distributing outside Google Play, you can use a new Android developer console to complete your verification. Our team dives deeper in the details on Android developers backstage, discussing common questions on sideloading, testing locally, and how a free Android developer console account will allow students, hobbyists, and enthusiasts to distribute apps to a limited number of devices without needing to verify their identity. Sign up for early access and continue giving us your feedback. We'd love to know if any part of the experience is confusing or if you have a feature request. Android Studio Narwhal is now stable, which includes features like agent mode. For AI-assisted development, you can now use agent's markdown files to provide project-level context to Gemini. Image and file attachments let you include visual information or project files in your queries. Android Studio now includes the model context protocol that lets Gemini integrate directly with developer tools like GitHub. This enables Gemini to access your repository's issues and pull requests, providing rules to assist with tasks such as resolving issues directly within the IDE. In a series of shorts and blog posts, Paris discusses these updates and more. This summer episode of The Android Show recaps the Made by Google event and shows how you can build for the Pixel Watch 4 and leverage APIs and multi-window experiences for the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. It also shows the AI-powered Androidify app. Androidify is an open source app that lets you create personalized Android bots. Androidify integrates Gemini and Firebase AI logic, and the UI is built with Jetpack Compose, leverages Material 3 expressive design and adaptive layouts. You can hear from Rebecca Franks as she shares how Androidify was designed and developed. Wear OS was our second Spotlight Week this year. It covered Material 3 Expressive, the Watch Face, Push API, and Passkeys. Material 3 Expressive for Wear OS embraces round screens with animations, components, dynamic color, variable fonts, and layouts like the transforming lazy column that scales and fades items as they move to the edges. The Watch Face Push API on Wear OS 6 enables Watch Face marketplaces and is available on devices like the Pixel Watch 4. Use this API to create dynamic watch faces that are themed from photos, display-rich data, and integrate with phone apps. In this deep dive video, John discusses why passkeys are a simple, fast, and secure authentication method. He shows how Credential Manager helps users sign into Wear OS apps using passkeys without needing a connected paired phone and without needing to remember their password. That was just a highlight. Be sure to see the full Wear OS Spotlight Week for all the updates. Over to articles. Dynamic app links enhance app links with exclusion support, query parameter support, and dynamic updates. Feature combinations are sets of multiple camera features like HDR and 6D FPS running simultaneously. You can use Feature Group in Camera X to now check for device support of feature combinations before enabling them. When integrating HDR content with SDR user interfaces, a visual phenomenon occurs, making SDR content appear dimmer as our eyes adapt to the brighter HDR. To address this, you can adjust the desired HDR headroom window property. Toma and Mozart explore new capabilities for image generation with Firebase AI logic, including in-painting and conversationally editing images. The Compose Adaptive Layouts Library offers new features for building responsive UIs across various screen sizes and form factors, including new large and extra-large window size classes for connected displays. 
With Window Manager 1.5, you can calculate window metrics from an application context, not just an activity context. This provides more flexibility for accessing window information from different parts of your app. In her first installment of the Media 3 preloading series, Mayuri shows how Preload Manager reduces latency for playlists and feeds. In her second installment, she covers how to fetch analytics with Preload Manager Listener and advises using a sliding window to add and remove items when users scroll through content to avoid out-of-memory errors. DHCP v6 PD provides dedicated IPv6 address blocks on supporting networks. This addresses address scarcity and ultimately improves performance and battery life. Support is rolling out to most devices running Android 11 and later, and no action is needed on your part. R8 streamlines your app by removing unused code and resources, rewriting code to optimize runtime performance, and more. With AGP 8.12, we improved resource shrinking in R8, opt-in to make your app smaller, leading to smaller downloads, faster installations, and less memory used on your users' devices. We discuss best practices for migrating users to passkeys, like prompting users to create passkeys during account registration and recovery, ensuring to use Credential Manager for a unified UI, and more. Uber saw over 90% of their passkey enrollments were from in-app promotion, and Economic Times saw a 10% improvement in passkey creation completion rates with targeted nudges. Gratitude, a mental wellness app, released twice the number of innovative experiments with Gemini and Android Studio. The team used AI to set up baseline profiles to speed up cold starts, and to improve app stability. This freed them to spend more time on new features like AI image generation for vision boards. Entry, an online learning platform, also reduced its UI development time by 40% by converting Figma mockups directly into Compose code. The latest version of Gemini Nano enables you to integrate capabilities like summarization, proofreading, rewriting, and image description. Performance benchmarks on Pixel 10 Pro show an increase in how fast the model processes input with text-to-text -text and image-to-text. Google TV and Android TV will require 64-bit app compatibility to support upcoming 64-bit TV devices starting August 2026. This requirement only impacts apps that utilize native code. By November 1st, 2025, apps targeting Android 15 or later must be compatible with 16 KB page sizes. Over in videos, Yasin discusses how to migrate to 16 KB page sizes for faster launches and lower power consumption. Alice explains that the Play Console monitors and flags apps for excessive partial wake lock usage, discusses how developers should use Work Manager to avoid manual wake locks, and testing and debugging strategies. In Under the Hood with Google AI on Android, hear about on-device and cloud-based AI solutions along with tools and support. Learn about 16 KB sizes, wake lock management, AI, and more in the Android Conference Talks YouTube series. The Google Play Games Level Up program boosts game reach and engagement. It introduces a U tab where players can view content and rewards from their games. Android Developers Backstage dives deep into Journeys. Journeys allows developers to describe test steps in natural language to reduce time spent writing and maintaining test code. We also showed how Jetpack Compose features new drop shadow and inner shadow modifiers, offering granular control over shadow parameters like offset, blur, spread, and color. We Are Play covered the Know Your Lemons app that helps users identify breast cancer signs and explores apps using Google AI to solve problems in agriculture, education, pet care, and more. On to Android X updates. The Jank Stats API is now stable and can be used to identify UI Jank and add context to understand why Jake is occurring. List detail scene strategy and supporting pane scene strategy can help you develop canonical adaptive layouts. Material 3 Adaptive now supports margins and edge-to-edge -edge for list detail pane scaffold and supporting pane scaffold. Camera Viewfinder is stable, providing robust lifecycle-aware view and compose-based APIs for camera previews. Several improvements for proto layout and tile libraries include new helper methods for images, APIs to accept pending intent as click actions, and fade in helper animations. Compose for Wear OS adds new non clickable cards and time picker options. Work Manager adds a new API for applying back off when the system interrupts work. For apps that opt into system call logging, individual calls can be excluded from the system call log on newer Android versions with a new is log excluded Boolean. 
Vertical is a new library designed to support vertical text layouts like Japanese. And that's it for this episode of Now in Android, covering the Android 16 QPR Beta 2 release, the Android Studio Narwhal Drop, the Android Show, Androidify, the Wear West Spotlight Week, and lots more. <laughs>